Hi, I'm Jason. Welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. Here we're going to learn about the very important topic of density. Uh, density is important because it's a physical property of everything around us. And so when we start to learn about different elements and compounds and their properties, density of, of the material is just going to be something that pops up over and over again. So let's spend some time here talking about what that means so that when you see the word density in your book, you're not worried about it, you're not taken aback by it, you totally understand what that means. First of all, density is a word that we use in our everyday language, so most of you, most of us, have some idea what density might mean even without talking about chemistry. So ask yourself that. What do you think the word density means? Usually we talk about something being dense or not being dense, and usually when something is dense it means it's hard to understand, somebody's dense, maybe they're hard to get along with, something like that. That's sort of what we mean in our everyday language. But getting more towards the, the, the language of science, if you think about what something that's dense might mean, you might think of uh, something being heavy, you might think of something having mass because it's very dense material, you might think of lead being very dense because it's this big heavy thing, you might think of feathers not being so dense because it's just kind of this lightweight stuff. So you know that uh, mass slash weight play a part in the definition of density, uh, but that's only part of what we're going to, to, to find uh, that we have. So the first thing you need to sort of know, and I know that you all know this, is that everything around you has mass, right? This marker has mass. I can put it on a balance and I can figure out what its mass is. I can tell you that this has maybe like six grams of mass here, right? But this marker also has a volume associated with it. I can calculate that. It's basically a cylinder. So I know the radius of the cylinder. I know how long the cylinder is. I know some math. So I can calculate the, the volume of this guy. So I know its mass, uh, because I can measure that. And I know its volume, because I can measure that too. And what happens is if you take the mass and divide it by the volume, you get what we call density. It's mass per volume, or mass divided by volume, however you want to think about it. Basically, in layman's terms, density is trying to tell you how much mass something has compared to how big it is. Because when you think about it for a second, uh, the mass of an object, you know, um, the mass of a pile of lead here, yeah, it's important to know what that is, maybe, but the mass of a pile of lead is not really a great uh, property of the substance because maybe my pile is this big, maybe my pile of lead is this big, maybe my pile of lead is as big as a house. So when I measure the mass of something, that's useful to know, but it's not the whole story if I'm talking about the property of the thing, because I may have a truckload of, of lead. Likewise, maybe I have three feathers in my hand and I can take the mass of those feathers, not gonna be too much weight or too much mass. But what if I have you know, an entire backyard full of feathers, or maybe an entire basketball stadium full of feathers? It's gonna have a lot of mass, but it takes up so much volume. So when you really wanna compare two things, you can't just talk about the mass, usually. You need to talk about the mass in relation to how much space it takes up, which is the volume. So that's why we define something called mass per volume, and that's what we call density. So let's go and put some numbers to it to make sure you understand. So we're talking about the topic of density. All right. So what we know is that uh, objects, object has a mass in kilograms. You can measure it in grams. You can measure it in kilograms. You can measure it in other units. But they're all these are all basic units of mass. And we also say that objects have a volume. Now this volume can be measured many ways. Maybe we measure it in cubic meters. Maybe we measure it in cubic centimeters, right? Maybe we measure it in cubic millimeters. These are all the same thing, they're just different units. Or maybe we might measure it in terms of liters. You might think of a two liter of soda. Well, that's two liters, that's a unit of volume. So we might measure it in liters. We might measure it in milliliters, which is one one thousandth of a liter. These are all different ways to describe the volume of something. Maybe you have a very large volume. It may make a whole lot more sense to use cubic meters because that's a large unit. Maybe you're talking about just a drop of liquid. It would be silly to talk about cubic meters of the drop of liquid because the unit's so big, but we might instead want to use milliliters or uh, you know, cubic uh, 
actually this would be cubic mil uh, millimeters here, cubic centimeters or something like that, if we're talking about a small unit uh, there. So these are all different ways to talk about the volume of something. Now when we combine these two guys, right, when we combine these two guys, the density is equal to the mass literally divided by the volume. So if you measure some mass, stick it in your calculator, measure a volume, stick it in your calculator, and divide those two numbers, you're going to get uh, the, the density here. All right. Now when we're talking about volume here, just to kind of give you an idea, when we talk about cubic meters or cubic centimeters or cubic millimeters, maybe I have a volume of an object here. I'm drawing it as a cube because it's easier for me. Maybe this guy is one meter on this side, Maybe it's one meter on this side and one meter deep. So how would I find the volume of this guy? The volume of a cube is the length times the width times the, the depth, or length times width times height, so one times one times one. So this would be uh, one cubic meter. So one cubic meter literally is a cube one meter on every side. One cubic millimeter is a cube of one millimeter on every little side. So that's basically what these units mean. So when we take the mass in kilograms, or grams, or whatever, and we divide by the volume in any of these valid units of volume, then what we're going to end up with is what we're calling uh, density. Now the units of density, usually, we write the density as just a couple of examples. We might measure it in kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, We might measure it in grams per cubic centimeter. We might measure it in grams per milliliter. Now make sure you understand what this means. You need to get in the habit in chemistry. When you see a, a fraction bar like this with units, it means per. So this is kilograms per cubic meter. Think about what that means. Very, very important. Don't just gloss over things trying to get to the next topic in chemistry. That's a great way to not do well in your class. Make sure you understand everything. When we say something has so many kilograms per cubic meter, that means that if I take uh, the substance and I take a cube of it, one cubic meter, which means one meter wide by one meter deep by one meter tall, imagine a box in your living room, one cubic meter, and I fill it up with this object that I'm talking about here, then the density of the object if it's, let's say, five kilograms per cubic meter, that means if I fill a cubic meter of it, it's going to have five kilograms of mass because it's five kilograms per cubic meter. That means for every cubic meter that I take of the stuff, it's five more kilograms, five more kilograms, five more kilograms, every time I box up another cubic, cubic uh, meter of it. If I'm talking about something smaller, it might make a whole lot more sense to talk about grams per cubic centimeter if it's a physically smaller object. So maybe this guy, uh, what do you think? The, the volume of this, not really sure, I haven't calculated, but it might be seven or eight cubic centimeters. I think I could probably fit seven or eight cubic centimeters inside the volume of this marker. This marker might have a mass of five or six grams. So if it were five or six grams divided by five or six, whatever it is, uh, cubic centimeters, I would divide those two things and I would get a number. And that would be how many grams per cubic centimeter of this object. That's what it is. If you chop it up into that small little volume, that's how much mass will be in there. And that's why it's useful to compare two objects using the term or using the concept of density because when you divide them like this, um, you basically you kind of equalize the scale so that it really doesn't matter how much of it you have, you're comparing the same physical volume for, for the two objects. So when you compare the two guys, it makes a little bit more sense. And we'll do an example here to show you that uh, right now. Let's say, say I have uh, one cubic centimeter of and also, when you see something like centimeters cubed or, or, or meters cubed or something like that, when you see this, don't try to say it as centimeters cubed. That, that doesn't help you too much. Try to say it as cubic centimeter. Then you get in, the, in your head the idea that it's really a cube that has one centimeter length on each side. Okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's say that we have one cubic centimeter of 
each of the following things. Let's say I have cotton, which you know from experience is fluffy and white and really seems to be kind of like something that doesn't have a lot of mass to it. And let's say I have lead, which we know to be something kind of heavier, something that's going to, you know, we use it when we want to weigh something down. Something that's really light, something that's really not so light. But let's say that in both cases I only have one cubic centimeter of each of these things. So picture a little cubic centimeter, so a little centimeter, you know, a cube with one centimeter length on every side of it, right? And that's how much cotton I have, and that is also how much lead I have. So, we say that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, you know, for each case. But we know the volume is the same. We know we have one cubic centimeter of each thing. So, let's say that for the, for the uh, cotton, let's say I know that I have one cubic centimeter, all right, but if I'm going to have this, the same amount of lead and cotton, I know I'm going to have less mass. I could put a number here, but for, it doesn't, the number really doesn't matter. I'm going to have less mass for that same volume. So over here, I'm going to have this, exactly the same volume, and so if I have the same volume, I'm going to have more mass. So make sure you understand what I'm doing here. What I'm saying is if I have one cubic centimeter, the same volume of cotton, and the same volume of lead, the volume is represented here in the bottom. There's a sort of an implied one out here in front because it's one cubic centimeter in each case. So if I have one cubic centimeter in both cases, then I'm going to have less mass. That's what the M is, less mass when I'm talking about the cotton. I'm going to have, relatively speaking, more mass of the lead. So when you think about it for a second, <clears throat> if you have a, a lower number here and a higher number here, then what we're saying here is the density of the cotton, right, is less than the density of the lead. Density of the cotton is less than the density of lead because if you think about it, this might be, you know, let's say two grams per cubic centimeter, right? But for the same volume, this might be 50 grams per cubic centimeter because it's going to weigh more. It's going to have more mass for the same exact volume. So when I do the division, I'm going to get this density. It's going to be grams per cubic centimeter. And that number for cotton is going to be less because it's got less mass for the same volume. That number for lead is going to be higher because I've got more mass for the same volume. So the density of cotton is going to be less than the density of lead. And that's what you might see in a book. You might see a table of densities in a big fat book that, that represents all the substances or something. You might look at it and you might see the density of cotton is 3 grams per cubic centimeter. You might see the density of you know, gold at you know, 100 grams per cubic centimeter. I'm making this up, but the heavier objects that we sort of see in everyday life compared to their volume, they're going to have higher densities. Uh, than the, the fluffy uh, items like that. Okay, uh, one more thing I'll say, and this is sort of just a tidbit sort of thing that you should keep in mind as we move on. These are all valid ways to describe volume. Cubic meter, cubic centimeter, cubic millimeter. We also talk about liters, because you think about your two liter bottles of liquid, and milliliters, right? Which is one one thousandth of that. One thing for you to know just sort of a mathematical equivalence, one milliliter happens to be exactly equal to one cubic centimeter. So if you see something in grams per cubic centimeter and grams per milliliter, because these volumes are exactly the same, it's just something I want you to remember because you might see cubic centimeters written somewhere, uh, somewhere and you might see milliliters written somewhere. The way the units work out, uh, those are the same thing. One cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. That's something you might want to file away in your head because as we work with volumes of chemical substances later on, that's going to be really helpful for you. So that is the concept of density. There's really nothing more to it than that. You take the mass of something that you have in the lab that you measure, you measure its volume, you divide the two numbers, and you get a number that represents sort of a physical uh, property of that substance mass per unit volume, mass per cubic centimeter, mass per milliliter, or something like that. And it's very, very important to, to characterize. So what we're going to do now is work a few problems to give you a, a little bit of practice with density, because it's really not that hard. First problem.